Well hello and welcome once again to the Waters and Stanton video channel. In this video we're going to attempt the impossible. What is the impossible? Well to try and get on all the HF bands from 160 metres through to 10 metres from a small garden and on a budget. Is that impossible? Well some may think so but let me explain or let me run through this in this video and show how you can probably operate on all the HF bands including 160 metres right through to 10 metres, maybe even 6 metres, from a small garden on a budget. Let's work it through together. Welcome to the Waters and Stanton Ham Radio Channel, presented by Peter Waters. So what is a small garden? Well, I've thought about it and I thought perhaps 45 foot long by 25 foot wide is not a bad size to represent perhaps a small garden. Now do remember that you can bend wire antennas because I need a wire antenna for this. You can bend your antenna around the garden. So if we have a small garden, we can't hope to get a decent antenna in a straight line. Bending the antenna around the garden is second best choice and it works far better than having a short antenna. The radiation pattern will be roughly omnidirectional anyway. How high does it have to be? Well, height is important in terms of performance, but it doesn't mean to say that a low antenna doesn't work. It won't work quite as well as a high antenna, although sometimes a low antenna will give near vertical radiation, which means to say it's great for short skip. If we're talking about the LF bands, then 160 and 80 meters, a low antenna will work pretty well. And even on the HF bands, it will give you contacts, pretty decent contacts sometimes as well. Remember, an antenna that is only around about, what, um, 12 or 15 feet high, that works good on, four, uh, on uh, 160 and 80 metres. It also work pretty well on 40 metres. And when you get down to 10 metres, it's not a bad height. And the bands in between, well, I've always found you can get plenty of contacts. And if the conditions are right, you'll get some DX contacts. So... Don't worry about height and don't worry about the fact that you've got to bend the antenna around the garden. Now, one thing I'd like to um, instill in you is the fact that you don't need lots of power. You don't need massive great aerials. It's very easy to get disillusioned when you uh, look at some of the videos that are published and some of the magazines and so forth. You see these guys with big towers and big antennas and uh, lots of power. You don't need that. And in fact, um, credit to the RSGB for their monthly column in RADCOM for um, HF operation. That tends to, comes down to the sort of, the, the, the real nitty gritty of ham radio as it was. It's guys using just wire antennas, using low power, very low power, home built transmitters and transceivers, etc. So it does mean to say that there's good examples there of guys who've got very simple stations, probably in small gardens, just like you may have. Um, low power, I don't know, 20, 30 watts, even lower than that, just a wire antenna down the garden. They enjoy ham radio, they get good DX. They have to wait sometimes until conditions are right, but that's the name of the game. It's almost like fishing, isn't it? You don't go fishing and expect to catch fish as soon as you put your rod um, uh, or you, 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 you launch your rod or whatever you're doing fishing. <laughs> Quite obvious I don't do fishing. But you get the idea that you have to sometimes wait, but you will get results and you'll get good results and you'll be really pleased, perhaps more so than the guy who knows he can switch on and work the world with his big antennas and his thousand watts, etc, etc. So don't get disillusioned. Now the antenna we're going to use in this small garden is the antenna I described in the last video. It's a, a random uh, length of wire. I call it random, it's not actually random, it's a precise length. 71 feet. Now this 71 foot of wire you can run down the garden, bend it at right angles to go across the garden and back up the garden a bit if you wish. You can, you can erect it as an inverted V or even uh, an inverted L. Now you do need a matching unit for this uh, antenna which is a 9 to 1 unun. I suggest that uh, if you're not familiar with this antenna, you look at my previous video and I describe that in detail, um, how that works. 
but you do need something called a 9 to 1 Anun. We, there's a couple of units we do on our website. One is made by LDG and the other one is made by Moonraker. And you need one. Of those. They're not overly expensive um, and that will enable you to get a good, a good match. You're then going to feed your antenna with coax cable. And I suggest you use RG58. You can use thicker cable if you wish, but you don't, you don't have to. Um, RG58 works perfectly well. And it's a lighter cable, so it puts less strain on uh, the, the, the support um, points at uh, the um, feed, feed point of the antenna. Now, you're going to feed the antenna um, at the beginning of the run down the garden. That's where you're going to place your 9 to 1 Anun. Um, if the 9 to 1 Anun has got an earth connection, don't worry. You don't need to um, worry about that. It just connect the uh, wire antenna to the positive side, if it's low positive, and uh, connect coax cable to it. You do need at the far end um, of the cable, just before it goes into your transceiver, you do need to make yourself a line isolator. It's very simple, um, just a, a coax core or um, one of these uh, inline um, ferrite um, cores that we also sell. A couple of those clamped around the coax just before it goes into the uh, transceiver will, uh, will, will do the job. Now with this antenna, um, you won't get a perfect VSWR. You'll get a VSWR something like 2 or maybe 3 to 1 on some of the bands. But with the transceiver that I'm going to suggest you use, you don't have to worry about that. The internal matching unit in that transceiver will take care of it. So bend your, bend your wire down the garden, fit a 9 to 1 and, un, and then run some coax cable back to your transceiver with a line isolator at the end, as I say, like a ferrite core of some sort, either a toroid core or one of these clamp-on uh, cores that we do. Now, the reason I chose the Yaser FT710, in fact, I chose the field version because that's cheaper. And I'll put uh, below uh, on this video now the pr current price uh, in the UK of this radio. And bear in mind that there's a further £85 discount on this radio. Um, from uh, Yesu UK, they will give you a cash back of £85. And also we've got a bundle deal going on this particular radio. So um, I think you get a, uh, a Yesu cap and there's one or two other accessories that you can get um, uh, discounts on if you buy your FT710 uh, from us. Why did I choose the FT710? Well, because it is actually an amazing transceiver. In terms of performance, it is really right up there at the top. If you look at the Sherwood Engineering, the only two transceivers that beat it are Yesu's uh, more expensive radios, uh, the FTDX 101 uh, series. But it's very close. And yet, it's probably one of the cheapest HF transceivers going at the moment, which is very unusual to get one of the cheapest HF transceivers performing so well. Um, I've used the FT710 now for about uh, two years and it works superbly well. It's got a beautiful receiver on it. It's low noise receiver, really works well. And uh, my only concern um, was whether or not this transceiver, whether the internal antenna matching unit would actually match a random wire. Um, I just wanted to see whether there was any, any problems with it. So I'm going to show you now the VSWRs that I was getting with the 49 to, for the 9 to 1 Anun and also confirm whether or not the transceiver matched it. Now bear in mind that you're not going to get, with a random wire, you're not going to get your sort of 1.2 to 1 VSWR. You are going to get a VSWR of 2 or 3 to 1, maybe even a bit higher on the low frequency bands. Provided the transceiver can match that, it will deliver all its power into the antenna. And the amount of loss that you get with these modest VSWRs is very, very low indeed, particularly on the lower frequency bands, which is where the VSWR starts to, starts to rise. So there's no risk, provided the matching unit inside this transceiver will match your antenna using a 9 to 1 Anun. There's no problems at all with um, uh, no danger at all with the fact that you've got a VSWR that's a bit higher, provided the matching unit matches it, 
the transceiver is quite happy to deliver full power into your antenna and the only loss will be on the coax courtesy of the VSWR. Believe me, it is so small it's not really worth worrying about. Anyway, let me show you the results that, um, and I haven't checked it yet, <laughs> let me show you the results now um, in the next clip of the video of uh, what, I, what I achieved on each band. Now what I'm going to uh, show you on the screen is the VSWRs that I got and the actual loss on each band caused by that VSWR. I'll explain that in a bit more detail uh, at the end, but just have a look at these, these readings for each band, 160 meters through to uh, 50 megs, I think I went to. So anyway, take a look. On 160 meters, very small loss, just a fraction. Uh, 80 meters, uh, we lost uh, a very small amount as well, just a fraction again. Um, 5.3 megahertz, again it was a fraction, didn't bother to actually measure it. 7 megahertz, highish VSWR, but only half a dB loss. 10 megahertz, very acceptable. 14 megahertz, small loss, less than half a dB. 18 megahertz, uh, gain very low, uh, 21 megahertz, pretty low, uh, 24 megahertz, extremely low, uh, 28 megahertz, what a gain, fraction of a dB, and finally 50 megahertz again, very low. Now I'm sure some of you will be horrified at some of the VSWRs, but Take a look again if you wish. The VSWRs uh, are high by a lot of people's standards on a number of the bands. But then look at the loss, the VSWR loss on that 50 foot length of coax for each band. These measurements are far lower than many enthusiasts would expect. Quite surprising. Now one dB, to put in perspective, one dB is the smallest change in strength that the ear can perceive. In other words, it's very, very small. So a 1 dB loss, or less than 1 dB loss on the HF bands, is really neither here nor there. And on all the bands from 160 meters through to 10 meters, it's usually below 1 dB. And in fact, on the lower frequency bands, it's just a fraction of a dB. You will get an additional loss on coax cable because coax cable has an inherent loss even at a one-to-one -one VSWR. You're going to get a small loss on RG58 cable, but it's less than 1 dB on all those bands. So, and of course everybody has the same problem. If you use RG58 or any other cable, you're always going to get a loss. Every cable has a loss. So all we're interested here is what is the additional loss when you have these VSWRs. And I think I've proved that it's, right, it's neither here nor there. Now, the really important thing is that the Yaesu FT710 has got an amazing built-in antenna matching unit, or perhaps in common parlance, we talk, we talk about ATUs. Either way, it's a matching unit, and it has the ability to match all these reactances we see on all the bands I had no trouble at all in the antenna matching unit coping with the various reactances it saw on all the bands. And what that means to say is that if the antenna matching unit achieves a match, it passes all the power, in other words, the 100 watts or whatever you've got it set to, it passes all that power into that coax feed line. The characteristic loss everybody suffers from, so you can ignore that, it's an equal playing field. So the only loss that we're getting is the VSWR loss, which is very, very small indeed. Credit to Yesu for designing one of the best internal matching units I've ever come across. And it's on a budget class transceiver. Quite amazing. So have we achieved the impossible? Well, I, th I think we may have achieved the seemingly impossible. Uh, it proves that in a small garden, you can run a wire down the garden, bend it around a bit, make sure that it's about 71 foot long, terminate it with a 9 to 1 anun, 
then feed coax cable, I've got 50 foot, but you can have less, 50 foot of coax cable back to your transceiver. If you're using a Yaesu FT710, you should find that that antenna matching unit will match it on all bands. I mean, what could you wish better than that? You've got a small garden, you can operate all bands 160 meters through to 10 meters or 50 megahertz, and you can run 100 watts, and the whole thing works. You've got all the bands to choose from. Now, I just put up on the screen now uh, the results I got on 160 meters. It was five o'clock uh, in the afternoon. We're in winter time now, so it just got dark. But I put out a test call, 100 watts on uh, 160 meters. And from the UK, you'll see that I got quite easily into Europe on 160 meters. So it does mean to say that if some of you belong to a club, and you're using a similar antenna setup and a similar transceiver, you can actually use 160 meters as, as a chat band because 160 meters does have the ability to produce quite a strong ground wave. So it's very good for distances up to about 10 or 15 miles or perhaps even 20 miles on ground wave. You get pretty good signals. It's, it's a good natter band as it used to be in the old days. So I hope, hope this uh, video has been of interest to you. Uh, thank you for your support on this channel. Don't forget the offer that is on Yaesu at the moment. If you're thinking about buying an FT710 or one of the other Yaesu transceivers, the HF transceivers, there's an £85 cashback and our bundled deals. You get a, a Yaesu cap. Um, on some of the bundled deals, you get a free power supply. I mean, look at the, look at the 710. Uh, what is it? £899. You get £85 back from Yesu. You get a free Yesu cap, which I think is worth about 20 quid. And you get a power supply, which is worth about 50 quid. I mean, you know, come on. Is there a better deal? And also, you can do part exchange. There we are. I'll get off my selling stall now. I don't often push products like that, but I just get so excited about some of these Yesu HF transceivers, particularly the 710. It's great. And uh, in the meantime, you enjoy your home radio, you take care. Look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now. Okay, from Golf 3, Oscar Juliet Victor. Yeah, you're about five and six here. Um, I'm pretty sure you've got a decent aerial. <laughs> My aerial is only um, um, a horizontal wire, uh, about 71 foot long, random length. But uh, uh, nice to get a report from you anyway. And um, uh, if you can copy me, I'll hand it back to you. Otherwise, um, uh, the other station can pick it up. From Golf 3, Oscar Juliet Victor.